This is Duke University. A close-knit circle of British artists and intellectuals produced provocative views on money, gender, and beauty. They were considered radical by their early 20th century contemporaries. Called the Bloomsbury Group, a handful of them became defining figures in their fields. The writer Virginia Woolf, economist John Maynard Keynes, novelist E.M. Forrester and biographer Lytton Strachey. One hundred years after the Bloomsbury Group began meeting, a year-long program at Duke revives the group's perspectives with an exhibition of Bloomsbury art, talks by Bloomsbury scholars, and conversations on Bloomsbury ideas. Professor Crawford Goodwin is the program's organizer. He explains why Bloomsbury was controversial in its day and what lessons it has for us today. The question of how you should live your life. The Bloomsbury's first became intrigued with this question when they went to Cambridge, or the, the original group, and they had their lives all planned for them by their parents, and they suddenly discovered that there were big questions about that, and uh, working together, they settled on a kind of uh, personal social philosophy. I think the effects of Bloomsbury on our society today are more reflected in the contributions of individuals. I think there's a great opportunity to make more of them as a community, which is the way I see them. But uh, Virginia Woolf was, and, and E.M. Forster helped to revolutionize the modern novel, so we certainly see their impact there. Uh, most modern biographers would say Lytton Strachey revolutionized the, uh, the writing of, uh, uh, of lives of people, a uh, much more critical, sensitive, structured way of looking at, at people's uh, histories. Uh, certainly Maynard Keynes' uh, macroeconomics is still the subject of much debate, and at times like this when we may be entering a recession, uh, his ideas become much more relevant. These people were all what we now call public intellectuals. They weren't scholars at any university. Keynes was a fellow of King's College, but he was away most of the time as uh, a journalist and a businessman and a person working in government. And so uh, they didn't talk about these questions in the way a scholar would. They, uh, they address them through a variety of different devices, including fiction and, uh, and theatrical performances and works of art. They did a lot of teasing. And this was often with a purpose. I mean, there was a famous incident when they all dressed up as a delegation from Ethiopia and wrote to the British Admiralty saying they would like to have a tour of the most secret battleship in the British Navy. And the British uh, Admiralty fell for this and gave them a tour of the so-called Dreadnought, this new battleship. Then when they got back to London, uh, they announced what they'd done. And this was partly um, a response to what they saw as rising militarism in, in Britain. They, they, they treated it humorously. So if members of Bloomsbury were around today, what would they be talking about? Well, I think if they were alive today, they would be very concerned about the, the condition of the world. Uh, global warming would certainly be a subject that would worry them a great deal. And also the relations among nations and among religions and ethnic groups and so on. And I think the way in which they approach some of th these issues in their own time are very uh, informative and, and, and inspirational for us. They were quite hostile to formal religion, which they thought on the whole was uh, destructive of peace and tranquility. And for that, they received a lot of criticism. But I think that that position deserves a hearing today as it did then. Uh, I think that um, one of the points they made about the environment is that our concern for it should be aesthetic as well as practical. It's not simply a question of preserving the, the air that we breathe, but also the beauty that's all around us. And that's an example of where their aesthetics gets involved with their social science. And that's something that I think we need to reintroduce. Uh, I think courses in aesthetics in the School of the Environment would be a very nice thing, which is something they would prescribe. Okay, but why celebrate Bloomsbury here at Duke? Well, we have at Duke uh, the good fortune to have a very imaginative and creative 
set of leaders, in my view, at the moment. And um, we've gone to as many parts of the universities we have time for and can think about and said, would you like to do something related to Bloomsbury? And we've raised a little money that's necessary to make this happen, but it hasn't been all that much. And we've had uh, extraordinary response from all sorts of centers and, uh, and departments, and particularly the Alumni Association, which is going to uh, put on this Duke in Depth event, which I think will be probably the most uh, important gathering on Bloomsbury ever in America that I know about. Well, I think among students, the most important impact I hope Bloomsbury will have on them is the need to reflect very seriously on how you'll spend your life uh, and the way in which you can use your mind, your brain, what they call the imaginative life, in the time that you'll have available when you're not going to be working, which will be a substantial part of your life. Among the faculty, I hope that it'll show them a new kind of interdisciplinarity, not the kind that we're most familiar with, which is sort of a cobbling together of disciplines, but how, how for example, storytelling, essentially fiction, can really contribute to our understanding of things. I think this is one of the most important messages that comes out of Bloomsbury. And the arts as well. I mean, they were, they were engaged in inquiry. And uh, this is inquiry in the arts and the humanities as well as in the social sciences and sciences. And they all were trying to understand things better. And if we could engage our arts and humanities in these areas of inquiry, that would be a major contribution. This is not going to happen in one year, but if we can you know, leave this, this idea in people's minds, so much the better. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.